Great Debaters Contest is brought to you by Safaricom M-Pesa. We're in the scenic rift valley for the Nakuru edition of the Great Debaters Contest. I am Austin Nyumbok. And I am Mariam Bishar. Today we have six lovely ladies from Karima Girls and Naivasha Girls debating. They are answering the question on whether democracy is really the right model of governance for some African states. We'll let them take the, take the stage now. <laughs> Proposal number one, you have three minutes. Democracy is just a mode of governance for the mob where 51% of the people may take advantage of the 49%. Now, look at this situation. A flock of sheep being led by a lion and a pride of lions being led by a sheep. What looks most scary? My name is Faith Ngina from Nevasha Girls. I am here to propose the motion that democracy may not be the right mode of governance in some African states. Now I'll start by defining democracy. Simply, democracy is a state of governance where the citizens are involved in decision making. We also have may. This shows present possibility, not an assurance. And also some African countries not all African countries. Now let's go back to my analogy about lions and sheep. Let's take a good example of our country, Kenya. The president has been reduced his vital powers in that the, uh, the citizens have more power than the president. That is like a sheep leading lions, don't you think so? My main problem with this democracy is that it takes too long before any decision is made. And everyone is involved before a decision is made. I'll take you all the way to South Africa. Let's take a good example of xenophobia that has been there ever since 1994. This is exactly when South Africa got the internal independence. Now, people are dying in South Africa. Yearly, deaths have reported to their hundreds. On 20th of April this year, seven people were reported dead. And you know what? One of them was a 14-year-old child who was killed in a looting because of xenophobia. But we still wonder that the South Africa Human Rights Commission 2010 recommendations were not implemented. Do you ask yourself why? This is because everyone's opinion has to be considered before any decision is made. And before everyone's opinions are considered, people are dying every single day. My other issue is government policies are rejected even before they are debated. Now, one of the most juicy thing in the manifesto of the Jubilee government was the laptop project for the class one students, for the class one pupils, I'm sorry. But what have we seen happening? It has been objected, politics have been involved, everyone's opinion again has to be considered. The issue is going on every single day. Our country is not developing simply because everyone's opinion have to be, have to be taken. Now, other than democracy, we have other forms of governance. This is dictatorship that has really worked in our country, and my colleague will talk about Rwanda. Thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes for your opening statements. The view from here is quite spe uh, spectacular, if I may say, because I can see different colors, different uniforms from different schools. Picture this way. If you all we were wearing gray uniform, black uniform, together with our judges, how would it look like? But because of something called democracy, it's not only one person who's making the decision. Many people have been given the freedom to choose what you wear. And that's why I, Grace Miner, stand before you this afternoon to propose the motion that democracy, to oppose the motion, sorry, that democracy may not be the right model of governance. In this aspect, what am I trying to say? Democracy is the way. And what is democracy? As we have been told by our opponent today, I would like just to correct her a bit by saying democracy is a form of government where the masses get to choose their leaders. Their voices are not only heard, 
but also listened and also respected. When I say something, I expect you to respect me, not because you're of a higher authority than I am, but democracy tends to bring us all together at an equal level. One of the advantages of democracy is this. When we are choosing our leaders, we choose the, the team that wants to have the majority and the minority which make up the opposition team. What is the purpose of the opposition? The opposition are there to serve as watchdogs. And what do they do? In case the, the government or the winning party is going against their manifesto, this is their work. One of the things that we have experienced, if I may go local with our country, Kenya, there are some governors who have been, who have been impeached. For, and even if I, if I go, inter, not international really, but still in Africa, Dambo Benki from South Africa, due to misuse of power, what happened? He was, he was impeached from his seat. And that's why we should all stand and defend democracy. Why? Through democracy, we are able to vote out people through the vote of no confidence and bring in people who feel they are worth taking that position of being in charge of ruling or being there to govern us. One person once said, it takes courage to stand up and talk. And it also takes courage to sit down and listen. So through my vote, I get to sit down and listen to somebody out there who is going to take an opportunity and talk on my behalf. When we come to an issue of advocation of human rights, we have civil societies, the Muslim society, the KNHCR, and the many others. What is their purpose? The purpose of this human rights, civil societies, they are there to make sure that whatever is being done, they are there to give our opinions. Not all of us right now can get out and we all go to the state house and expect our president to listen to us. He has so much to do, he has so much to cater, he has so much to worry or even he carries the worries on our behalf. That's why right now if people are fighting in Somalia, the only thing perhaps we can do is pray to the one we believe most, but the president is the one who has the authority to let to tell the KDF forces go to Somalia and do A, B and C. So my fellow students and also my audience, let us stand up for what is right. There's no way you can expect to see sunrise from the west, from the west. Where does the sun rise from? From the east. So today we have spoken. The only way needed is democracy. Thank you. We'll now hear rebuttals beginning with the proposers. You have three minutes. Democracy, democracy, democracy. Mediocre teachers tell. Good teachers explain. Superior teachers demonstrate, but great teachers Great teachers inspire. I am here to inspire you. I go by the name Skiro Patience from Naivasha Girls, strongly proposing the motion before us today that the democracy may not be the right model governance for some African countries. Now, what breaks my heart into pieces, what makes my heart pain so much is the fact that democracy is not right is the fact that democracy is just an experiment in the government. It has the obvious disadvantages of many people being the ones who give their views, but it's not really the main, we are viewing, we are basing our argument on the majority being heard, but have we looked at the minority? It's when we go for elections, the people vote, the majority wins, but the, are the rights of the minority really considered? Democracy results into time wastage, a lot of time is wasted before decisions are, are made. Let's not go so far. We have our own Monica Juma, who was, who was proposed for the position of the Secretary of the Government, but the Secretary of the Cabinet, rather, by the President. Well, it is said that the Monica Juma uh, said that uh, she, co she complained because of the number of visits that she was receiving from the members of Parliament. Now, the same members of parliament had to sit in parliament because Kenya is a democratic nation. They had to sit in parliament and decide whether she's fit for the position of the secretary of the cabinet or not. Obviously, they rejected her, not because she's a bad leader, no, but because she, because she, she had tarnished their name. Because of that, they, they rejected her. Her only mistake being, being her, her only mistake being the fact that she was true to herself, being the fact that she hit the nail on the head and did not beat around the bush. When I grow up, 
I don't want to do anything that is politics related, but if I were to become the president, I would ship to dictatorship. I would become a dictator. Yes, a benevolent dictator. The likes of Paul Kagame, whom I believe my colleague will expound more on. The likes of Jose dos Santos from, from Angola. As I finish, someone once told me, do not, someone once told me, do not bite more than you can chew. I told them that I'd rather choke on greatness than nibble on mediocrity. Think about that. Opposition, you have three minutes for your rebuttal as well. Well, I stand here not only as Shali Rongo from Karima Girls, but also as an African, a black, and that's why I defend my continent. First of all, who said there's no, there's no respect to what the minorities say? Remember, in democracy, there's something we call liberal democracy, or rather, constitutional democracy. As much as we all have a say, there's someone who has to make the final judgment. That is what we call democracy. Again, you're telling us that democracy is not good. This is a pen. If this is not a pen, I put it away. But then, what should we call it? If it is not a pen, what should we call it? And again, we're talking, about, we're talking about teachers. We don't have proper systems. That's why we offer for democracy. With democracy, we'll have, we'll have stronger institutions. And with stronger institutions, there's accountability, there's transparency, there's openness. With that, there's, a, there's accounting for those who are in power. That's why we say that whenever a leader makes a mistake, they are always watched. Those are the people who counter them. They'll tell them, this is wrong, this is right, correct this. And then again, about respect for minority. Isn't it in our own bill, we are our, our democratic government, that we have the respect for accused persons, respect for children, the respect for minority and marginalized communities. How are we able to form stronger constitutions that will, able to, will be able to equalize the difference between Nairobi and the difference between a rural, a rural town? Remember, in any other forms of government, for example, monarchical, which is in Africa, that leader, show, that leader makes a decision that shows is perfect. And trust me, this is not fantasy. No one is perfect. And if the truth won't convince you, at least it does provoke you. Also remember that democracy is a consent of the people. In very few instances, will it ever cause a revolution among the people? Why should we go five steps ahead and go back 10 steps ahead? When will you ever move? When will you ever evolve from a third world country to a first or a second world country. You can never compare how long a USA government has started. It started with that, and right now they are 300 years ahead. They are politically mature. We've just started. Give a chance for Africa. Let them decide. They're not children anymore. Trust me, if we continue not, if we don't take, we don't take democracy as a choice, we will never move ahead. This is our only chance to improve not only our economic standards, but also our political standards, our political immature, uh, maturity, how we're able to make informed choices, always politically. We will move ahead. Trust me on that. Take part in the M challenge by sending your short song, rap, or poem about Safaricom M Pesa on WhatsApp, and you could win 1,000 shillings in Safaricom airtime. The 
audience has posed questions to the two teams on stage. They will be responding shortly. The proposers have been asked to expound on how dictatorship has, well, has worked well for Africa. And the opposition have been challenged that sometimes in democratic states, uh, the citizen returns to, to regret their decisions and who they've elected. But in monarchies, they may appreciate their leaders more. So we'll have them respond to the questions. <laughs> Proposal number three, you have three minutes. My name is Faiza Ann from Naivasha Girls. I will answer the question that was posed to us by Peter from Upper Hill. He asks, dictatorship has worked well for Africa. How? Well, I'd like to give an example of Rwanda. Just for the records, Paul Kagame is a dictator. Why? Because I bet most of you don't know that because um, he is a dictator in a very peaceful country. Um, as of 2014, as published by the New Times, Rwanda's leading newspaper, statistics show that 19 out of 20 children in Rwanda are enjoying free primary education. In Rwanda, treatment is free. Apart from that, Rwanda is the cleanest and safest country in Africa. The only country in Africa that has majority of the parliamentarians as women is Rwanda. Don't we want that? Power to the female race. Well, apart from that, um, someone has just, uh, one of my opponents has said that, um, well, there is something called liberal democracy, whereby the voice of my, the minority is heard and considered. So my question is, uh, and she has also asked, uh, when will we get out of the bracket of being called developed, developing countries? Don't we want to get to the first world countries as they are called? Well, I have a solution, dictatorship, another form of government other than democracy. We can have dictators. They have the radicalization it takes to get us out of this bracket. Um, examples you might need, Muammar Gaddafi, um, the former president of Libya was, um, at, was trained in the military academy. He had this in him. Charles Taylor of Liberia, he was a guerrilla soldier. And um, apart from that, Paul Kagame went to, uh, he attended the US Command Army College. He has that radicalization it takes to stamp out issues, Africa's deep-rooted issues that did not start yesterday. We have to stamp out things like poverty. We have to stamp out corruption, bring medicine to our, to our hospitals, take children to schools. We don't need to take baby steps towards the right direction? Would we rather take baby steps to the right direction or take long strides that will take us somewhere? That they will just take a couple of years, but we'll get there eventually. I think we should just go for the long strides because it's high time we got out of this bracket. Don't you think so? It's, it's so bad being called a developing country, yet we have the resources, we have the capability. Thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes to respond to the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Martha from the very ambitious Karema Girls, and I would like to respond to the question, majority gets to decide the leaders in the current democracy, whereas they soon, t they later come out and say that that decision, they are regretting it. Whereas in a country like Britain, they have a monarch in place that seems to be working. I would, I would like to point out a fact. In, in, the Brit, in, the Britain, in the United Kingdom, the, the king or the queen is in fact a ceremonial figure. So as much as they are the head of the state, they, are, they don't get to make all the decisions for the people. And in, line of, in light of this information, I'd like to point you towards our own country. Here, yes, a majority chose the president and he gets to make the decisions for us. And so far, so good. They, we are seeing no civil laws among us. We are still le le leading under this president. He's kept in check by his people. The people are not revolting because the decisions he's making, they get to have a say in it. My opponents here, you told us of how dictatorial governments are actually the best. You, I would like to take you back a couple of years ago in our neighboring state, Uganda. Where were the people going? Were they not under dictators? They were under a dictator, and they were in so much pain that they were rushing to our country for aid. 
In that time, their economy suffered so bad, they were at the point where to buy a loaf of bread, you had to carry a word of notes. Has we, have we ever gotten to that state and we've not been under detector? And in light of a dictator, dictator being someone who can actually push us forward so as we can become an, economic, an economically developed country. In a country like Tanzania, Mwalimu Julius Nyerere was such a humble man. He would sit down to have a meal with students from my university. That was how humble he is. But he did lead his country to be economically developed. It is not a matter of how strict we are, how hard we can push our people. It's a matter of how we can inspire our leaders. Uh, you can inspire our people to be better people. Like you said, a, a, good, a great teacher inspires. That's what we need. We don't need to be pushed. We are not wheelbarrows after all. We, what we need is someone who will show us the way because we are done being children. It is time for us to make our own mistakes. Let us have the chance to say what we want because when we say what we want, if we do make a mistake along the way, obviously, when you ride a bike for the first, first time, you will fall down a couple of times. There will be bruises. There will be broken limbs. But what is the end result? You'll be able to feel the wind blowing through your hair, your, uh, your hair as you're flowing through the streets. Think about it. We'll now hear closing submissions. Proposers, you have one minute. Once again, I take the stage just to convince you a little more that democracy won't work, and especially for some African countries. Which African countries? Developing ones, especially. So you've talked of, uh, uh, my opponents have talked of uh, um, Tanzania and the humble Julius Nyerere, but take a look. Can you compare Libya during Gaddafi's time and Tanzania right now? You cannot. I, I mean, no offense, but then we need someone who will be on toes, who will keep us on toes. We don't need to keep on arguing. You no, know, it reminds me. Um, some three people were arguing. One was an optimist, a pessimist, and an opportunist. So the optimist, it was about a glass of water with some water. So the optimist was like, no, um, the glass is half full. The pessimist, no, it's half empty. But what did the opportunist do? He drank it. They were still arguing democracy in the name. Really? We, can, we don't have time for this. Let's take this chance. We need, we need to get us out of this bracket. We so need to do that immediately. Thank you. Opposition, you have a minute as well for your final submission. First, let me start by a correction. Currently, Tanzania is not under Julius Nyerere. Back to statistics. In Kenya, our economic development is at 12.4. Whereas in, Zimb in Zimbabwe, that has a um, constitutional dictator, it is at 4%. Think about that. Another thing, democracy is a freedom for us to decide. When your ma when a parent raises their child, their future, their expectation is that that child will one day be able to make a choice for themselves. Africa is done being a child, a child that will always be told what to do. It is time for that child to be allowed to fall down, break a limb, and decide what is going to what is going to be tomorrow? It is a, it, your parent will not always be there. That dictator will also have a timeline. A time will come when that dictator will pass on or will leave office. Then what? Who will be there to show us which way to go? Raise this child to be a better human being, to be a person who can make a choice. My Vasha girls proposing the motion that it might not be the right mode. And I'm happy that you're able to say that because it is not the right mode, then let us go for a dictatorial kind of governance. That is commendable. But you see, the question that someone might, might ask is, if we talk about dictators, how do we arrive at a particular dictator to become the leader? Will we go to the polls? Or how do we select that particular person? And that is why you are told that possibly you could have defined who a dictator is and possibly argued out how we shall arrive at this particular person to take over the leadership of a country. And the same applies to Karima girls. You are in view that dictatorship, uh, democracy is the best, but that African governments should go by it. And I believe there are many examples of African countries that have flourished, you know, uh, in, under democratic kind of governance, you know, 
I wish you could give us many examples, you know, a, a, a couple of examples of countries that have flourished, you know, in so many ramifications of the word. For Naivasha girls, you know, you offered us dictatorship as your option, you know. Uh, nonetheless, it was good for you then, if that was the option, to define for us who a dictator is and not just to, to just give examples of Paul Kagame. You know, Paul Kagame, others will come and argue out that he was elected, is it? Maybe you're talking about his style of leadership being dictatorship. So it's good for you to play safe when you're talking about this and give factual examples that it, it has, has been proven. For Karima Gas, I want to applaud the teamwork all across. Um, Irongo Fair attempt, Mother's Welfare attempt, and Grace as well. That was a good attempt to both teams, and all the best to the winning one. Well done, ladies. We had quite a discourse right here, deciding on um, uh, comments and grading and so many things. And normally that's healthy. Grace, all right? A very good definition of terms, strong voice, passionate and confident with a coherent flow of ideas. Irungu, you saved the day when it came to definition of the term democracy and bringing us to speed on what's being talked about. Um, then we have Martha. Martha again, strong voice. Good example about Tanzania and as much as uh, I think one group thought you are referring to the current leader. No, I think that was just a confusion and you did well to have a strong conclusion. Naivasha girls, the judges gave you 70.1%. Please give them a hand. Karima girls, the judges gave you 70.6%, making you our winners. Congratulations to the two teams. We'd like to send our gratitude to Safari Mempesa and KBC Channel One, urging our members of the audience and our viewers back home to follow us on Twitter at Great Debaters EA. I am Austin Yambok. And I am Mariam Bishar. We'll see you next time. Contest was brought to you by Safaricom Mpesa.